Hello everyone, Tom with Capo Fetish. Welcome back. Today on the channel, I'm going to talk about 10 underpraised singers from the 1960s. I've chosen 10. I'm going to count them down right now. Coming in at number 10 on my list is Miss Dionne Warwick. I, I got to tell you, uh, from just a personal, a personal opinion here, I think uh, the, um, the, the axis of Burt Backrack, Hal David, and Dr. Dionne Warwick uh, produced some of the greatest pop singles of the 1960s. They weren't really an albums artist, they were, they, but they really cranked out really infectious, semi-melancholy tracks in the 1960s that really, really hit home for a lot of people. Millions of people loved these tracks. And I think over time, I think people don't really talk about how singular a talent Dionne Warwick was. She's still around with us today. I think she's still making music, but I think her highlights, the highlights of her career come from this period in the 1960s. When you think about tracks like Walk On By, Anyone Who Had A Heart, Do You Know The Way To San Jose, um, tracks like, just heartbreaking tracks like I'll Never Fall In Love Again. These songs are just infectious. They really hit you to the core. I think she's a real singular talent. Uh, she has her own style, a lot of class. I just love Dionne Warwick's voice, and I love the work she did with Hal David and Burt Backrack in the 60s. So she's coming in at number 10 for me for uh, 10 underpraised vocalists from the 1960s. On the other side of the spectrum, let's go with John Kay at number nine from Steppenwolf. I don't think he gets enough attention either. I mean, he's got that wh whiskey-soaked, gravelly vo vocal, which kind of, I mean, when you think about it, was really kind of the predecessor for a lot of heavy metal, hard rock singing. Um, when you have tracks like Born to be Wild, Magic Carpet Ride, I think one of the highlights uh, for me for John Cale's vocals is the song Pusher, The Pusher, which was on the Easy Rider movie and soundtrack. That track, I have that track always when I go on road trips. It's a great road trip track. And it's just, it's just this, the, the, whole, the whole vibe of that track is so amazing. And tracks like Rock Me are amazing. So I think John Kay doesn't really get his due. He should get his due, and we're giving him his due right now here on Capo Fetish. Uh, we're putting him at number nine on 10 underpraised vocalists from the 1960s. Coming in at number eight, Felix Cavallari from The Rascals, also known as The Young Rascals. This guy really had a real distinctive voice. Full of hits in the 1960s. Of course, he was trading off with Eddie on vocals here and there, but uh, I think some of the best Rascals tracks like Lonely Too Long, Good Lovin', uh, Come On Up with uh, Felix at the helm are some of their greatest tracks. Just very soulful, fantastic. I saw a reunion of these guys, I think about 10 years ago, I believe it was, at the Greek Theater. He was still in fine form. The whole band was still there. And it was fantastic. So I'm going to go with uh, Felix Cavallari from the Young Rascals, the Rascals, coming in at number eight. Coming in at number seven, I'm going to go with John Sebastian from the Love and Spoonful. Though he's not really like this powerhouse vocalist, I think he has the most nice, mellow, earthy tone to his voice. Everything he sings is just, it's just uplifting. It lifts your spirits. All the Love and Spoonful hits, all the incredible album tracks. Um, John Sebastian, so underrated in general as a songwriter as well. So um, I, I've just always, always loved his vocals. I just think they're just so, um, so earthy and so, and so, um, I don't know what, it, how, to, how to even put it into words. They're just, they're just uplifting and they feed my soul. So I'm going to put John Sebastian here at number seven on my list from The Love and Spoonful. Coming at number six, a guy that's had sung some of the most incredible songs in the history of pop music. Good vibrations. God only knows. Okay? Just, just two to mention there. Then we've got Darlin from 1967. And then great songs from the early 70s like Long Promise Road, Feel Flows, The Trader. Of course, of course I'm talking about Carl Wilson from the Beach Boys. Right alongside Brian Wilson as the best voice in the Beach Boys. Um, has an incredible falsetto, just like Brian Wilson. He has a lot of soul to his voice as well. He can sing softly. He can, he can be a little, more, a little more gravelly, a little more loud than Brian Wilson. I think not enough people talk about Carl Wilson's voice. It's one of the most amazing, beautiful things ever. 
And his voice, especially from like the mid 60s, probably about 67 onward, he's on a lot of great Beach Boy tracks, which I just talked about. So I'm going to put Carl Wilson here at number, uh, where are we at? Number six on my list of great underpraised singers from the 1960s. Coming in at number five, a guy, I mean, here's a guy that came out of the British invasion. I think he's overshadowed by people like Jagger, Roger Daltrey, Steve Winwood. But I'm telling you, I think I think Eric Burden is one of the greatest vocalists of the rock era. And, uh, you know, of course, the Animals, they, they weren't really a uh, an albums band, but God, were they an amazing 60s uh, singles band. I mean, just single after single after single, just amazing, starting with House of the Rising Sun. Then you got It's My Life. We got to get out of this place. Then you've got like uh, more mid-period stuff, like When I Was Young, which is so effective. And his vocals, I mean, they're just so like, um, obviously, they're, 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 they come from a blues, a blues perspective. But uh, and he puts that kind of pop element into the vocals. But um, you know, th th once they started going kind of more psych, his vocals even got even better. I think with like uh, uh, Sky Pilot and the song Monterey about the Monterey Pop Festival, and uh, on and on. I mean, they, they have just an incredible amount of great singles, and and they, they are amazing singles because Eric Burden is singing these songs, and I don't think he gets enough credit. I think he's one of the greats of all time. I mean, let's let's listen to that vocal on House of the Rising Sun from 1964. That really kind of says it all. Incredible stuff here. Eric Burden coming in at number five for me on incredible, underpraised singers from the 1960s. Coming in at number four is a guy that never really found huge success. He had he was kind of looked at as a one-hit wonder in the early 70s, but he had put out a good handful of stellar albums in the late 60s one of them being this album i'm talking about lee michaels hammond b extraordinaire incredible soulful vocalist this is his second album recital which features a lot of harpsichord on it this is probably more his pop oriented record there's a track on here uh, it starts the album off called uh, if i lose you which is absolutely stellar it should have been a should have been a huge single this whole album it's just full of stellar cuts. There's barely a bad track. I think there's one track on the end of Side 2, I believe. That's not very good. But overall, one of the great late 60s albums. And then his third album, just called, titled Lee Michaels, which features uh, just him on him and B with drummer named Frosty is really amazing too. There's a cut on here where he does, um, oh, his version of Stormy Monday is one of the best versions I've ever heard of Stormy Monday. Listen to that vocal on that track. Pull that track up on YouTube and you know what I'm talking about. It is absolutely a powerhouse vocal, especially the keyboard work too. It's really, really cool. Uh, there's a song on here that was kind of maybe a mini hit called Heidi High. It's kind of a good sing-along track. But I think this album here, the self-titled album here from 69 and Recital, really, really showcase the talents of Lee Michaels um, in, uh, I think it was around 70, maybe 71. He had that song, uh, what was it called? Do You Know What I Mean? Which is kind of, it kind of puts him in that one-hit wonder kind of bracket. But far from a one-hit wonder, Lee Michaels is an incredible keyboardist and vocalist. If you've never heard him, check him out. Coming in at number three. A guy that, uh, you know, he he claims that uh, it, it was, he claims in interviews that it wasn't a big deal that he turned down this band. But I'm sure deep inside his soul, he probably thinks, what the hell did I do? I'm talking about Terry Reed. Of course, he was asked to join Led Zeppelin as lead singer, but he turned it down for a solo career. Now, his solo career never really took off. He has a lot of um, admirers. A lot of musicians love him, but I think uh, the widespread appeal isn't real distinctive. A lot of people don't really know who Terry Reed is. If you've never heard Terry Reed, check this album out. This is his first one, Bang Bang, Your Terry Reed on Epic Records. He does a lot of great tracks on here, like covers, like Season of the Witch. Uh, there's a track on here called um, Erica. Uh, he does a version of Bang Bang. This guy can really, really belt it out. These are more of his kind of... Uh, kind of more of his rock albums in the early 70s. He put out one called River, which kind of showcases more of his kind of his singer-songwriter kind of perspective, his kind of vibe. Uh, his uh, self-titled album from 69 here, Terry Reed, is a real, real winner. If you've never heard this one, 
does a song on here called Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace, which Cheap Trick did on the Live at Budokan album, the uncut version. Of course, his version just smokes that version uh, by a mile. Uh, there's other great songs on here like July, really soulful ballad. Um, others like Highway 61 Revisited, he does a version of that. Rich Kid Blues, and Psy 2, which just is amazing. So Terry Reed, an incredible talent. Never really reached the masses, but he's all over YouTube to listen to. Pick up his albums. You'll be um, pleasantly surprised by this incredible artist. So Terry Reed coming in at number three for me. And coming in at number two, not only one of the greatest vocalists of the 60s, but one of the greatest rock vocalists. Uh, a rock vocalist for me that should be in the, any top five list. I'm talking about Gary Brooker from Procol Harum. Any of the first three Procol Harum albums, this is, has Whiter Shade of Pale on it, you should pick up. Uh, showcasing Gary Brooker's amazing Ray Charles influenced vocals. Just a, another powerhouse vocalist standing up with the greats. Shine on Brightly here. We've got the title track. We've got Quite Rightly So. We've got um, Skip Softly, My Moonbeams. The whole second side in Hell, Twazi and I showcases uh, Gary's just soulful delivery. Some of his best moments on A Salty Dog is the title track, which just gives shivers and, and a chill up your spine. Songs like All This and More, another one that just showcases just his prowess. And of course, the first album here with Whiter Shade of Pale. Songs like She Wanders Through the Garden Fence, A Christmas Camel, Conquistador, which would later become a huge hit from the Edmonton uh, Orchestra Live album. So I'm putting Gary Brooker at number two on underpraised vocalist from the 1960s. For me, number one, number one, underpraised vocalist of the 1960s is Julie Driscoll. If you've never heard Julie Driscoll, she played with Brian Auger. This is some of her best material on the Street Noise album here from 69. You will find tons of riches here incredible tracks like um, Czechoslovakia. Just unbelievable vocalization from Julie Driscoll. She sounds really like nobody. And um, it's really a shame that a lot of people here in the U.S. and quite frankly, all over the world don't really know her as a household name. She should be a household name. Tracks on here like uh, Word About Color, Czechoslovakia. She does this incredible version of Light My Fire. She does Save the Country by Laura Nero. Um, I mean, really, this this is one of the greatest albums of the 60s right here. It's a double album, too. It showcases Julie Driscoll's incredible vocals. Also, Brian Auger's amazing Hammond B playing. And uh, there is really just not a bad moment on this album. She did have a hit in the 60s, 68, I think, of... Um, of uh, this Wheels on Fire, written by uh, Dylan and Rick Danko, but, uh, or was it Richard Manuel? I'm not sure. But anyway, that was sort of a hit. But uh, she kind of remains more of a cult artist. But um, I think she is one of the greatest unsung singers of all time, not just from the 60s, but all time. Pull her up on YouTube, however you can find her. If you could find this album right here, uh, Street Noise, pick this up. This will change your life. By the way, this is an autograph by Brian Auger. I saw him play at the Baked Potato in L.A. maybe about 10 years ago, and he was the coolest guy. And uh, I remember handing him this record, and he goes, oh, I love that record. Love that record. So he's a big fan of this record, too. And here's a guy that's put out probably a good 24 records in his lifetime. He's now in his early 80s. I believe he's still playing Brian Auger, and I think he's playing uh, more in Japan than the U.S., but he has a huge following in Japan. But anyway... That's enough of my ranting. Uh, if you can, listen to Julie Driscoll. I think she's fantastic. Those are my 10 favorite unsung, underpraised singers from the 1960s. Do you have any more to add to the list? Please put them in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, press the subscribe button if you dig the content. And we'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.